Hey everybody, it's Murr from Impractical Jokers. Listen, if you're like me, you're single. <laughs> and you're like, what do I do? How do I get a date? What? Here's how you get a date. I recently met a guy, his name is Craig Kenneth. Super nice guy, he's a dating coach. I mean, top of the line dating coach. He's such a nice guy. And I was like, you know what? I gotta use your services, Craig. Craig, call me, cause I got no plans and it's a weekend. <laughs> so check him out on YouTube, you'll like him too. Bye. Breakups are often the symptom of problems in a relationship. My workbook series, The Knowledge, is focused on helping you change your life in four key areas. Retaining the information that I teach, personal growth, improving your relationships, and of course, reattracting your ex. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about common reasons for divorce. Well, they say the divorce rate is, what, close to 60% now? Yes. And that is a sad and scary thought, right? Right. And so it's understandable that when you're going through a tough time in a relationship and you feel hopeless, you kind of want to give up and end it. but you got to understand why something falls apart in order to correct it, right? right. So you want to be proactive in trying to understand what causes a relationship to fail. Because if you understand what causes it to fail, you can make corrective measures. Yeah. And so today we're going to look at some of the reasons that people get divorced. And maybe you'll see these problems pop up in your relationship and maybe why your relationship ended. Because, you know, obviously, if it happens in a divorce, it could easily happen in any kind of romantic Absolutely. relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you're out, in, whether you get your ex back or whether you move on, um, be aware of these things because you sure don't want them to happen twice. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about it. Let's, All right. What do you got here, Margaret? We got 10 of these. All right. Extramarital affairs are responsible for the breakdown of most marriages that end in divorce. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's infidelity. Okay. And it can be serial infidelity or it can be, you know, just one incident, but mm -hmm. enough is enough. Um, and, and kind of all of these, for me, felt like a symptom of a major, of absolutely. the major problem. Absolutely. So when I'm seeing infidelity, okay, but why are people cheating? Well. Yeah. Because they're feeling disconnected from their partner and their needs aren't being met. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it happens with somebody at work and oftentimes it starts out as a seemingly um, innocent friendship. Yeah. But can easily go from kind of emotional intimacy to sexual intimacy. Yeah. Because maybe you're feeling disconnected from your partner yeah. and so you start talking with those person at work Absolutely. and then you start to bond with them and next thing you know you both are hooking up and you're both cheating yes, on your partners right. Right? and neither of you really planned it in the first place not that you don't have to take responsibility for it mm -hmm. and I remember a few weeks ago we did a um, a talk on on why people cheat mm -hmm. and it's really came down to a lack of communication um, if you can't communicate the big issues it's so much more tempting mm -hmm. if you don't hear me I'm gonna show you yeah. Okay. And there's some anger there. Oh, yes. Yeah. And do you see me? Do you hear me? And is what I'm saying important to you? Yep. Those are the questions. I think I did a video on that I myself I think you did as well. Too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The second issue is money. What a surprise. Okay. You can have very different approaches to money. Somebody's a saver. Somebody's a spender. Um, and, you know, you can run into huge trouble about, why did you spend money on that? Yeah. We could have saved that. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one that's hard is, who makes more money? Mm -hmm. And that can be a source of, of anger, embarrassment, or uh, because in this culture, men are supposed to make more money, and mm -hmm. if they don't, they may often feel like they're not doing their job, or yep. um, they're not where they should be. Sure. And I say, if she's making more than you, enjoy it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But it's not that simple, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. Number three is lack of communication. Mm -hmm. And that's if you've survived the first two. Um, this is huge. And this we see day in and day out. And I will say, well, have you talked, you know, have you ever talked with your partner about this? Oh, no, why? Well, she might get upset. 
or he might get angry. Yeah, and um, being upset and angry are parts of living. Those are normal feelings that we have. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes people are so afraid of someone being upset or angry at them that they don't communicate and it never solves anything. I have a particular client at this point who doesn't tell his wife anything because he doesn't want to get her upset. Well, why did you bother to have a relationship if you're not going to share? You know? yeah. um, the old proverb is it doubles the joy and divides the grief yeah. if you have somebody who's really there with you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that doesn't solve anything. And, you know, um, and I see oftentimes that people don't communicate, period, even in other situations. Mm -hmm. Um, I had one, one couple who fights by texting. I couldn't wait that long, nor could I throw anything. And not only that, things get so miscommunicated in yeah. a text as opposed to if you yeah. say something. Right. You can Directly. think something is sarcastic when it's not, well, yeah. or hostile when yeah. it's not when intended it's not, to be. Yeah. You're losing so much. But we're programmed to talk to mm -hmm. each other. That's what separates us from all our cousins. Yeah. We talk. And sometimes words seem inadequate to convey what we really feel, but it's all we have, so we have to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so lack of communication. I didn't know you wanted to do that. You planned a vacation for when and didn't tell me? Yeah. Um, and, and for the anxious person, it makes you feel like they don't care about you. Like, how could you just plan a vacation? I've had that recently. Yes, exactly. And not don't you care? You yeah. are I not important in your yeah. life? And for the avoidant, they're like, well, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. <laughs> I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Yeah, you hear that. And that never gets you any points either. Yeah. Um, the next one is constant arguing. Mm -hmm. And that means, you know, you're attempting to communicate, but it's not happening. Mm -hmm. And if somebody thinks they're at, they're, if you think somebody's angry at you, you shut down right on the spot. Mm -hmm. And I'll say to people, well, could you reduce the yelling in your house? Well, if I don't yell, nobody listens to me. If you do yell, nobody listens to you either. Mm -hmm. They just, all they know is that you're yelling and they just shut down, get away from you, try to defend themselves in any way they can. Yeah. So they, that's one of my favorite lines. They don't, if I don't yell, they don't listen. <laughs> I hate to tell you the reality here. Uh, weight gain is mm -hmm. another big issue because that can sort of affect intimacy and how attracted you are to each other. And not only that, Instead how you feel saying, about yourself. Exactly. So if you yep. put on weight and you yep. don't feel good about yourself, right. especially women, they are, feel insecure yep. or unattractive. Oh, and this society is brutal about that. Oh yeah, it really brutal, is. Brutal. Mm -hmm. um, and it works for men too to some extent. Sure. Unrealistic expectations. Now, why would we have unrealistic <laughs> expectations? What does Hollywood tell us? That we'll find the right person, immediately know it's our soulmate, and we'll be transported on a pink cloud to live happily ever after. Yeah. Does that often happen? No. You don't have a pink cloud? Unfortunately, I looked out the window, no pink cloud. No, I don't have any either. And we're in Florida, there's a lot of clouds. There's a lot of clouds, yeah. <laughs> and none of them are pink. Um, but we expect our spouses and the marriage to live up to our image of what it ought to be. Mm -hmm. And these expectations could put a lot of strain on people who may have different ideas from what you do. Yeah, I had a uh, marriage and family uh, teacher uh -huh. back when I was in uh, my master's program. Uh -huh. Who His approach was, find someone and work it out. Well, that's pretty simplistic, <laughs> isn't it? Find somebody and yeah. work it out. Ironically, he got divorced. I can't imagine why that would be. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Good Lord, some of the things you hear that therapists say or teachers say are unbelievable. Yeah, but unrealistic expectations are everywhere. Yeah. Lack of intimacy. Now that, that's very tricky. Not feeling connected to your partner. And of course you first think of sex when you talk about intimacy, but it's not just that. It's how often you talk during the day. and. And the way that you talk. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I can't wait to find out what happens with this thing that's going on for you at work. You know, mm -hmm. let me know whenever you find out. Sure, yeah. yeah. Or I tried to put make reservations at the Blah Blah Hotel for our next vacation. Well, mm -hmm. let me know whether they say yes or no. Um, so a real interest in what you're interested in. Yeah. And we did uh, a, a video early on when I was doing them with you um, about basic, basic communication, like do you say good morning to each other? I know mm -hmm. families where people don't. I do. Yeah. Um, and one of the things we saw was that 
one of the things people most want in a relationship is emotional intimacy. Yep. Are we close? Do I care what your mood is today? Mm -hmm. Do you care what mine is today? Do I care what you had for lunch? All of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to respond to each other's moods and anxieties and so forth and so on. Yep. Um, and that's why people get married. Okay. Um, lack of equality. Okay. One person may say, I do all the work, I work, I do the grocery shopping, and you sit on the couch, drink beer, and watch the Yankees. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you could say, I go to work every day, and I bring most of the money in, and the house is messy, and I do most of the chores. Mm -hmm. So if there's any feeling of inequality, and that goes into money too, but chores and so forth and so on. Sure. And could you help me with the whatever? Mm -hmm. um, that's a big one. Yes, it is. Lack of equality. I mean, because you, could you imagine how it would feel if, if your partner is not doing anything in the house to help out and you're doing all the work and you just like, come on, help me out here. Yeah. What, what, are, you, what are you doing fair. here? Yeah. Well, I worked all day. No, that doesn't do it. So did I. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so you got to do your share. 50-50 you got to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, not being prepared for marriage. And that can be quite a jolt. Mm -hmm. It is no longer all about you ever again from this day forward. Yeah. You remember that one? Yeah. yeah. From this day forward, it's not about you. And you know, if you had parents that were unable to stay in a relationship together and your model of relationships is really them, then how are you going to be prepared? I mean, how would you know to be prepared? How, how would you know? you know how to handle the ups and the downs and yeah. the highs and the lows? And, the... and they're going to be in any relationship. Yeah. It would be really, really difficult. It really would be. Okay. To know what to expect. And I think um, we got one more here. And the other one, which we've already talked about today, is abuse. And it's interesting. I was talking with a very insightful person yesterday who said, given her background, which was difficult, um, she's never sure how much nonsense she should put up with mm -hmm. and how insightful of her um, because there was craziness in her family and other people tolerated it yeah. she wasn't sure where the line was between reasonable and not reasonable yeah. so you really have to give that some thought no matter what you came from it is a struggle yes it is yeah yeah like how would you um, know how would you know what is um, okay or unhealthy yeah. and I've had people say to me is that really emotional abuse Yes, it is. If people promise you stuff and don't deliver and, you know... Um, if somebody constantly makes you feel miserable or yeah. hurt or yeah. sad yeah. or upset and just... or whatever it is, you know, that's a good sign that it's some kind of yeah. abuse. Right? That's exactly right. If, you, if it doesn't feel good, it's not okay. Yeah. And remember, you have a personal agreement with this person. And Per person can always say to you, well, everybody does this, every family is the same, there's no guy, no woman on earth who isn't going to do this, blah, blah, blah. I don't care, it doesn't feel okay to me, so I don't care what rules you got. Yeah. Mine are, I'm not putting up with this. But it's a sad reality for some couples. It doesn't always stem from the abuser being a bad per person. Deep emotional issues are usually to blame. Regardless of the reason, however, no one should tolerate abuse and removing yourself from the relationship for safety is important. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you have to really work at communication. You really do. And making it a priority. Whether you're going to try and reattract an ex or somebody new in the future, if you don't communicate, a lot of these symptoms are going to come up. You know, and a lot of these things that lead to a divorce or a breakup are going to come up. So. Effective communication takes real work because when somebody is upset at you or angry at you for something you did or something you didn't do, you're going to naturally want to defend yourself. That's right. And it could be a real struggle to be present with them when they're saying to you, you did this to me. It's real easy to tune up. Yeah, or defend. Yeah, or you just defend. go up. And you automatically want to be like, well, you know, you did that to me, or you did this to me. But once it gets to defensive, it's no longer a productive discussion, mm -hmm. you know. Um, okay, so, and emotional abuse can be very subtle. It can be very subtle. Um, but if it doesn't feel good, don't tolerate it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, hopefully, looking at these common 
reasons for divorce yeah. will help you and you can take a look at your situation and your breakup and think, okay, how many of these did I have? We had 10 here. And that's what we've talked about is after a breakup, it's a great time to look at what happened and how not to repeat it. That's right. Reassess because this is yeah. when you're going to be at your most motivated. Right. Um, what will happen is if your ex either comes back or you find somebody new and you haven't really done enough personal growth or aren't committed to it, you'll regress and you'll go back to those old ways that you've been doing for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, whatever. Yeah. Margaret's case, 450 years. That's it, exactly. Yes, that's a long time. I better get it right. Yeah. So really work on communicating and learning to communicate. You can practice now with your friends, with your family. Of course, it's going to be different because it's easier to communicate with them right. than it will be with your partner, especially when they're upset about their yep. needs not getting met. Yep. Think about the people who are close to you and how well do you communicate. And have you ever seen a couple who communicated well? Absolutely. I mean, the neighbors can become extremely important in a case like that because everybody you meet, you learn something from. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember when I was a kid growing up being puzzled about a couple of families in the neighborhood who I never saw talking to each other. Yeah. And as it turned out, they really didn't. Yeah. No. And I'm puzzled that you can remember growing up. Well, it's a long time ago, Craig, but I took <laughs> notes. In a galaxy far, far I'm away? Far, far away, yeah. I, I'm from a galaxy <laughs> far, far away. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully this will help give you some insight and for some food to thought in your own situation yeah. on what went wrong and yeah. how to correct it, right? And we wish you good relationships. Absolutely. But you got to work at it. It's not going to happen magically. No. All right, so if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching. I do Skype coaching. If you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. And quite busy, and I love it. So just sign up uh, by clicking on Margaret on the top of my website, and you can sign up with her there. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net.